put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Movie review. When John Bennett was a child, he had a lot of trouble making friends. So when he was seven, his parents gave him a teddy bear for Christmas. He named him Teddy because he's not very creative, and that night he wished for it to be alive. And it came true. And fast forwarding to today, he is 35, he has had a girlfriend for four years, and it's starting to kind of cramp their relationship that he's still living with Teddy. And yeah, it, the movie shows the attempts at growth for John and how, yeah, just, just the, the, this attempt of emotional maturity. And that pretty well covers the plot. I I want to start by saying that one of the really smart things that this movie does is not really go for the obvious jokes where this kind of, this object, or this, this being exists, and everyone is, you know, it, it has to be hidden from everyone, or people are constantly freaked out by it. He, it's not a secret, in, in the world of this movie, it's not a secret that this bear, Ted, is alive and talks and has personality, not to anyone. It, it was even famous for a little while. And thus we get past all those really annoying and really obvious jokes that we've heard, you know, way too many times already. With that said, the the plot is pretty much what we've seen many times before. That is really not where the strengths of this movie lie. And especially the climax is... I don't know, I, I really don't want to give anything away about it. It's just that there's something that goes on for too long I don't know, with that said, it actually is pretty moving, and honestly, there's a good chance that it will make you cry. I, I gotta admit, near the end, I, I seriously started hearing other people sniffle. What, you thought I cried in a movie theater? Come on, I'm, I'm a guy. I said, you will cry. I didn't say me. I'm kidding. Anyway, the... The jokes are really the main draw here, but frankly, I'd say it's almost even amounts of comedy and genuinely emotional 
drama. Now, this is Seth MacFarlane's first movie, first live action movie, and he fares pretty well. It there, there's really not much showing that it's his first. Now, in spite of the fact that he does the Peter Griffin voice for Ted, this really is not that much like Family Guy, or at least not as far as I can tell. I have not watched very much Family Guy because it does not appeal to me. It felt a lot more like... Uh, crap, what's it called? Man, it's been way too long since I watched. American Dad. That's it. But, yeah, the comedy is the typical raunchy... It's, it's what you're used to from McFarlane. You know, you've got stereotypes uh, about sexual, ethnic, and religious groups. And, yeah, if, if you do not leave the movie theater offended, Seth MacFarlane will be very disappointed. It's not very hit and miss. I had heard that it was, but I, frankly, almost every single joke was really, really funny. There are, granted, there are a few that fall flat, and there were certainly a few that I didn't personally get. There's this thing about, this isn't a spoiler, it's fairly early on in the movie, they talk about Flash Gordon. I know of this movie, but I have never watched it, so yeah, there's some stuff there that I didn't really get, and they do a bunch of material on that. But frankly, I enjoyed it without having ever watched the movie, and I think you would too. They, they drop enough hints. You, you get the context of the jokes. I didn't feel like there was anything where it was Completely. It's just the kind of thing where you'd appreciate it more if you had watched the movie. Now... The acting is rather good. Both of the... Well, yeah, really the entire trio of lead characters. Mark Wahlberg, Milo Kunis, and Seth MacFarlane do really, really well in the comedy as well as in the drama. You really believe these people and the relationships. You know, there, there are three relationships here. In, uh, there's the friendship between boy and bear, there's boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, and then there is that slightly strained girlfriend and best friend relationship. And you do get a sense, I mean, from several, there are these early scenes, early, early lines, where you really get a sense that Ted is not completely happy about, he, he does feel like she's bringing the cooties to the boy part. Wow, that came off much more... Yeah, I... Anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. He wishes that it was still just the two of them. And yeah, by, by the way, they do do, you know, bromance gay jokes. It's, it, it would be too obvious for them not to. And really, uh, that's something that's true for most of the movie. Pretty much every character you meet. There, there are some that are just there for jokes. But at least most of the major ones, they are real people. They feel like they would... They feel like they exist. I mean, it's like you know that person. Or you know the type. And you, you can follow their train of thought, their logic in what they do. 
I, frankly, I think this is miles beyond what most current R-rated comedies are. Now, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, I have not watched that many in the recent years. I kind of stopped because they started to look like complete crap. But, yeah, this one, like what I've just said, they actually feel like real people other than these, you know, joke characters. And it just makes it... it everything has a bigger impact. You laugh harder because these people are basically real. I mean, for one thing, you have this, you know, man-child thing going on with Wahlberg, but at the same time, Myla Kunis' character is also a little immature, so you can kind of tell, and they are immature together. She, he'll do a, a dumb joke, and she'll laugh, or she'll get with the joke, add to the joke, and you, you believe that these two would actually get together and stay together for four years. This is not one of those really ridiculous couplings where you're like, why is she with that guy? It, it feels real. The entire movie feels real. And for a talking teddy bear movie, what you really want is for it to feel real. And that sounds like a joke, and in part it is. But really, you need that to buy this talking teddy bear. And... Yeah, and, and obviously the talking teddy bear, you know, it couldn't have just been the big... You know, the, the fully grown friend that he grew up with. You know, it, it couldn't have been Nick Frost to Sean. It, it needs to be a teddy bear because, yes, yeah, it's, it's the symbol of his, you know, stunted emotional growth. Yeah, see, I know big words. Now, the acting in general is quite good. We have some pretty good supporting players. Like, Joel McHale as this major douche. He is her boss. And you just hate him from the moment you see him. And he's just constantly trying to hit on her. And showing off how rich and successful he is and all of this stuff. And it's just... It's, it's, yeah, he's, he's really funny and really well cast. I think what, what really sells it is that grin. And if you know who Joe McHale is, you know the grin. Yeah, that just utterly cinches it. Patrick Warburton, in a very small role, he doesn't have that much to do, sadly. Giovanni Ribisi, I'm not sure I should really give away what he is, but he's a lot of fun. I, I will say that. He... I hadn't expected him to do what he did in this. I... Yeah, those are some images, certainly. There are a few things in this that are... kind of trying to push where push the boundaries, which is a trend in these R-rated American comedies, and yeah, some of those are really, really, yeah, 
disgusting and the like. Although I can't claim that they weren't funny. But with that said, outside of that, the movie isn't really kind of just dumb and just pandering. Like, like I said, the, the balance is there for maybe not one-to-one, -one, but like for every two laughs, there's at least one genuine serious moment. The pacing is phenomenal. This movie flew by. There was one point where I kind of realized this movie is nearing the ending. Have I been watching this movie for that long? It just... Yeah, it just, it was really just full of energy. It, it did not slow down. I never felt like it was dragging. I never felt like a scene was unnecessary. It did a fantastic job on that. There are, of course, pop culture references, parodies of major movies, already mentioned Flash Gordon, jokes about drugs and the like. Excuse me. I suppose that more or less covers it. Excuse me, yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.